Hello, my beautiful friends, brothers and sisters. How are you guys doing tonight? I am here with a Bible study. I hope you guys are going to join me. Tonight we are in the Old Testament. We are in the book of Isaiah. And our devotion tonight is by Elizabeth Byrne D. Gear. We are in Isaiah chapter 60. And the devotion Bible verse for this is... Light up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters are carried on the hip. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell. With joy the wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you the riches of the nations will come. And that was Isaiah 64 and 5. All right. So now I'm going to go over and read to you Isaiah chapter 60, which talks about the glory of Zion. As I told you so many times, it says in the Bible a lot and by a lot of people that the Lord loves Zion. Zion's a wonderful, beautiful place and God loves it. Love Zion, the glory of Zion. So let's talk about it tonight. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look upon you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters are carried on the arm. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you, the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land, young camels of Midian and Eph, and all from Sheba will come, hearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. All Kidron's flocks will be gathered to you. The rams of Naboth will serve you. They will be accepted as offerings on my altar, and I will adorn my glorious temple. Who are these that fly along like clouds, like droves to their nests? Surely the islands look to me. In the lead are the ships of Tarshish, bringing your sons from afar with their silver and gold to the honor of the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. Foreigners will rebuild your walls, and their kings will serve you. Though in anger I struck you, in favor I will show you compassion. Your gates will always stand open. They will never be shut day or night, so that men may bring you the wealth of the nations their kings led in triumphal procession. For the nation or kingdom that will not serve you will perish. It will be utterly ruined. The glory of Lebanon will come to you. The pine, the fir, and the cypress together to adorn the place of my sanctuary. And I will glorify the place of my feet. The sons of your oppressors will come bowing before you. All who despise you will bow down at your feet and will call you the city of the Lord, Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Although you have been forsaken and hated with no one traveling through, I will make you the everlasting pride and the joy of all generations you will drink the milk of nations and be nursed at royal breasts. Then you will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Instead of bronze, I will bring you gold. 
and silver in place of iron. Instead of wood, I will bring you bronze and iron in place of stones. So, and iron in place of stones. I will make peace your governor and righteousness your ruler. No longer will violence be heard in your land, nor ruin or destruction within your borders. But you will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. The sun will no more be your light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon shine on you. For the Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Your sun will never set again, and your moon will wane no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of sorrow will end. Then will all you people be righteous, and they will possess the land forever. They are the shoot I have planted, the work of my hands. For the display of my splendor, the least of you will become thousands, the smallest a mighty nation. I am the Lord. He says, I am the Lord. In its time, I will do this swiftly. All right, and that was Isaiah chapter 60. And now let me read to you Elizabeth Burndy Gear's devotion that goes along with this um, Bible tonight, this Bible uh, chapter. As a city girl, I never learned about bird song, but then I spent a year volunteering in Alaska and got an education. I'll always treasure. On long walks in marshes surrounded by lush woodlands, one of the school teachers I worked with taught me how to recognize the calls of different birds. I slowly began to distinguish the different notes and rhythms that alerted me to the presence of pintails and plovers, patarmigans and Pacific loons. The sound of nature became a rich symphony to my ears. When I returned to New York City, I thought I wouldn't use my new birding skills, but I was wrong. Now when I ride the crowded subway, I tune in with my listening skills, and I hear sounds reminiscent of bird song. In what before used to be noise, I can now discern a variety of languages and dialects. I hear families interacting tourists from around the world speaking, and teenagers laughing together. My commute has become special as I savor the sounds around me and realize that the sound of humanity is a gift from God. Just like birdsong or a babbling brook, I hear Jesus speaking to me in this diverse human chorus, and I marveled at his beauty and wisdom. And the homework she wants you to do tonight is spend time with a sense you take for granted, like sight, smell. Hearing, touch, taste, or smell, sight. Can you use it today to become more aware of Jesus communicating directly with you? Okay, so that is your homework for tonight. Or a question, as we'll say. Ain't much really homework. This is more like a saying, I guess. Um, our next Bible study will be in the book of John. We've done two of those, haven't we? Here recently. This one's John chapter 10. I don't think we did John chapter 10 in a while, have we? It was John chapter 3, and wasn't it like John 20 or something? Let's see what John chapter 10 is about. The shepherd and his flock. The unbelief of the Jews. Okay, so that'll be our next Bible study. Now I will go real quick and read to you guys tonight's animal devotion. This is going to be a short Bible study tonight. And this one is by Kathleen Ruckman. 
And the Bible verse that goes along with her animal devotion is James 1, 17. And it says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights. Amen. All right, let me read it. Summer nights kept my sibling and me playing in the yard where it was less muggy than indoors. Sometimes we'd lie on a blanket on the grass and look up at the stars. And sometimes we'd be blessed with our own stars that twinkled in the air above us and around us. These were the fireflies, or as we called them, lightning bugs. So did we, we used to love to catch them as kids, put them in a jar and stuff. I remember that, at night, just running around catching lightning bugs. So nice. Of the more than 2,000 species of fireflies, only some are equipped with the ability to glow. These insects sparkle in various colors, such as yellow, light red, green, and orange, and some synchronize their flashes to display a brilliant light show. They're beautiful. I am blessed to have grown up in the western Pennsylvania where these miniature lanterns light up our summer nights. Fireflies are actually beetles, not flies. Poetically speaking, they are alchemist, meaning a chemical reaction ignites their spectacular glow. Almost 100% of the energy in this reaction is emanated as light, more efficient than any man-made bulb that emits only 10% of its light while 90% is lost to heating. In the lightning bug, our creator designed what scientists call a genius light. God gave us the moon and stars to shine in the darkness and sun rays to create the dawn. And he gave us tiny bugs that twinkle in the night. Great or small, God is always reminding us that light permeates darkness. Most importantly, Jesus is our eternal beam to light our path to heaven. Amen. Lord, thank you for being the light in my darkness and the sparkle of joy in my night. You alone are the light of the world. Shine your light through me that others may know you. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, I'm going to stop there for tonight. I won't even have you guys practice your verses tonight. I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Let's bring those souls to Jesus. And I hope you guys have a great night's sleep. Good night, guys.